Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Screen Orb. The guys of Porn Stars seem to know it all at their world famous gold and silver porn shop on the Las Vegas Strip. From muskets to coins, autographs to automobiles, the team has the cash and charisma to woo shop customers and TV audiences from around the world. The reality series documents the dealings and family dynamics among the three generations of Harrison men, their goofball family friend and a roster of subject matter experts. It's been a hormon for the History Channel, but success in business doesn't mean perfection. Sometimes these porn stars can be lazy and tend to run up on the bidding process without doing proper research and consultation from the experts. Their miscalculations sometimes lead to huge losses. Today we will be sharing you 7 times when running up the bidding goes wrong. But before we start guys I would want you to hit that red subscribe button to enter our monthly shout out giveaway. Just comment down below saying I subscribed and we'll enter you into the giveaway. Number 1. The Willie Mays Uniform In a 2012 episode called Free Willie, Corey made the blunder of forking over 31 grand for what he believed was a game-worn Willie Mays San Francisco Giants uniform from 1961. But the red flags with this one were apparent from the jump. For starters, the uniform was pristine, a point not lost on Chum Lee and observed. This doesn't look game-worn. Willie Mays was a badass. He was sliding around in the dirt and the grass. I imagine there would be a bunch of stains on it. Good observation, Chum. Also, the seller had no authentication paper work whatsoever, which is never a good sign. But Big Hoss took a gamble and boy was he all kinds of wrong. In an in-depth tracking of what happened to the uniform post porn stars, the blog Hall of Shame discovered that not only did they fail to retail it at a ridiculous asking price of 80 grand, but they only ended up getting 19,200 for it at auction around two years later. And it gets worse. After reaching out to Dave Grob, the senior uniform authenticator at MEARS, Hall of Shame reported that the uniform was never worn in a game by Mays because it never even belonged to Mays. It was a sport holding salesman sample with minimal value estimated to be worth around two to three thousand dollars. Of course, the technicality means Corey didn't get as ripped off as he could have, since he still unloaded it just for shy of 20k, but we seriously doubt he's happy with how that deal went down. Number 2. The Shoeless Joe Jackson Autograph In the season 6 episode, Say It Ain't So, Rick made another ill-fated gamble without consulting his trustworthy experts, shelling out $13,000 on a book he believed might contain the authentic signature of baseball great Shoeless Joe Jack. Rick couldn't have been more excited during this appraisal, saying this is absolutely incredible and speculating that it might be the rarest sports signature period because Jackson was illiterate. But despite the seller's questionable certificate of authenticity and Rick's own reservations, as he admitted of all the sports signatures in the world, this is the one most faked. He bought it anyway. After hearing from Rebecca, his book expert, that the signature was likely a fake, Rick then sent it out to another authenticator who reiterated the bad news. Not only was it forgery, it was a laughably bad one. Number 3. The Wells Fargo Strong Box In a fifth season episode called Corey's Big Play, Rick made the unusual mistake of buying something he was unsure of before he had it authenticated. He dropped $450 on what he believed to be a 19th century Wells Fargo Strong Box, only to have his hopes of a profit shot down by expert and show regular Mark, the beard of knowledge. Hall Patton, who called the box a complete fantasy piece, Hall Patton twisted the knife a little more, saying, It's one of the most faked items out there. The seller also brought the box in stuffed with two ball and chain sets he thought were artifacts from the Yummer and Folsom prison. But Rick recognized them as fakes right away, meaning Rick definitely should have sent something wasn't right with the box. The old man who observed the whole transaction wasted no time rubbing it in, telling Rick, I thought it was fake to start with, but he let the deal go through just so he could have something to hang over Rick's head. Number 4. Rick's $100,000 loss at the auction If the world famous gold and silver pawn shop can't retail an item, they always have the option of still turning profit by sending it to auction. That's what Rick tried to do with several big ticket items including a 1940s Indian motorcycle with a sidecar and a Vic Flick owned and played Fender Stratocaster, which he put on the block at Julian's auctions in Los Angeles, according to the Indy Channel. Unfortunately, he took a hit for 29 grand on the motorcycle and $35,000 on the guitar. Ouch. He must have not done well with some of the items either because he reported his total loss at around $100,000. He said, sold most of my items, getting my ass handed to me and it doesn't feel good. Trying to look for a silver lining, I just can't find it. I'm dreading going back to the shop. Number 5. Robo Ripoff This is a case of the shop almost getting ripped off by one of its own. Austin Chumley Russell rarely wanted to buy Robosaurus, a 31-ton fire-breathing transforming Tyrannosaurus Rex that feeds on cars, trucks, and small planes. It sounds scary, but the robot was made in the 80s, which now renders it adorable. 
I've never seen him this excited, said colleague Corey Big Hoss Harrison as the pair met up with the dinosaurs dealer in a 2012 episode. It is a money-making machine, the seller said. It can be rented out, it can be leased out, it can do bar mitzvahs, it can do big, giant demolition derbies, 25,000 bucks a day you can make from this thing. The asking price of $1 million. Harrison didn't buy it, calling Robosaurus the biggest, most impractical thing I've ever seen. Ignoring Russell was a wise decision. The last time Robo changed hands was in 2008 when it sold for $575,000 at a classic car auction in Arizona. The seller's $25,000 estimate may also have been a stretch. According to Robosaurus.com, though the dinosaur performed at the Miramar Air Show in San Diego in 2015, its earning potential was temporarily sidelined by a shoulder injury. Number 6. 1966 Imperial Crown Convertible If you ask most people under a certain age these days what cars Imperial has made, they'll look at you blankly. The Imperial Crown was originally by the name of a Chrysler model, but it became its own brand in 1955. This stunning car was a huge success. We're not sure how much the car cost the gold and silver pawn shop at the outset but apparently it took the old man a full 15 years to convince a seller to sell it to him. That's already a lot since it went to the old man and not the shop. But then there were $10,000 in damages done to the car after its engine went kaput one day, which puts the shop in the hole even more. Number 7. 1957 Chevrolet 150 while this late 50s Chevy looks awesome and has tons of history, it was an absolute horrible buy for the Porn Stars group. This black 150 was at the center of a series of crossover shows on Porn Stars. It was originally found and bought by the crew on American Pickers for $6,500. It was then sold to the Porn Stars group for a small profit, then featured on American Restoration, where they paid a surprising $70,000 to restore it. The icing on the cake was that it was then gifted to the old man. In all, the Rick and his group were out almost 80 grand, and to make matters worse that $70,000 restoration didn't include fireproofing, which was evident when the car lit up. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our future videos in the future. Also guys, please do check out the two videos you see on screen right now. It really helps our channel out. With that said guys, I'll see you in the next video.